Hey, welcome back to Fox and Robin Recording. I am Justin, and let's go take a look at today's video. Okay, so we're back here in the studio. Uh, we've been doing some major upgrades, actually. As you can tell, I no longer have the PMCs behind me. Uh, basically, I've got a set of Atom Audio uh, T7Vs, and I do love them. Um, I love them just a little bit more than I love my PMCs, which is kind of uh, a big no-no, I guess, um, because these are much, much, much more affordable than a pair of PMCs. Uh, these, I think, cost somewhere in the $250 a piece. So you get $500 a pair. That's still a pretty good deal. I like them better than the Cali Audios. And the reason we're doing these um, is because those are now a part of our current Atmos audio slash immersive audio room that we're creating here. We've got a 514 room that we've created so far. We're going to keep expanding into eventually 914. We figured 514 and then we'd step into 714 and then 914. And then if we really feel creative and really stupid, we don't really have the space for it. It would be 1114. We don't have enough speakers for that or even 1116 we might do a 916 that would be kind of cool um, so basically if you're not familiar with it you have five surrounds that's the five one is the subwoofer which we'll get into here in a minute and then four are your ceiling speakers so we've got four that hang above us right now um, and if you're wondering what i chose for the ceiling speakers and my surrounds is the Atom Audio T5Vs, the little brothers to these guys. Um, I haven't got a chance to actually go through them and hear how they sound, but we've been mixing on the T7Vs for the last couple weeks here, and it's, they sound phenomenal. I love how they sound. Um, but as you can tell, completely different kind of setup than we had before. So we're going to keep working on placement. These are just kind of placed right now. They might be a little wide for what we're doing. We just still have to keep playing with stuff and kind of go from there. But that's what we're doing. So as I mentioned, one of those channels is a subwoofer. Now we have the sub sitting here on the floor and I'm going to show it to you as I try to pick it up. It's a little heavy. Aha. We got it here. This is the Atom Audio T10S. It is the subwoofer we chose to go with the system because it is the same line as the T7s and the T5s. Uh, so we thought, why well, might as well do that. Because when you're making an Atmos system, you want all your speakers to be the same brand. You don't want to mix match. You don't want to add a KRK here, a Yamaha here, PMC there. Like, not a good idea. So the best idea is to go around and basically buy all the same brand. Now, the sizing doesn't really matter. Like, your surrounds can be smaller than your left and rights or your LCR. Uh, it just depends on what speakers you've gone to. So we chose the fives to do our surrounds. And like I said, we're doing a five one four room. So we have five surrounds. Three of those are actually, yes, three of them are T5s, the T5Vs from Adam Audio. And they've got the ribbon uh, tweeter in them. And I do like the way they sound. However, a side note, when you get them, if you buy them brand new or whatever do you, when you buy them, let them run for a little bit just with some music playing through them. To kind of get them burnt in because they do take a minute to kind of acclimate and get working again so just a side note but like i said we also have four that hang above us we've got uh the t5vs that hang and you might be wondering justin those don't have a hanging mount on them actually none of them do so we have probably war avoided our warranty um and adam if you're watching this let us know if we have um, but we have taken and found a very similar mount that Adam uses and a couple other uh, speaker companies use uh, to hang speakers. And uh, we basically screwed them to the side of the cabinet and hung them. Uh, we have not yet turned them on to see if they still work, but as um, assured as I was when I was doing this from a local speaker cabinet company, they basically told me like, you should be fine as long as you don't use too long of a screw. So I don't think we did. Um, they don't weigh a lot. Uh, the mounts are rated for hundred pounds. I think they weigh maybe five at the most. They're not very heavy, 
My kids actually helped me carry all these down here. Anyways, not the point of today's video. I'm talking about the sub. So this sub here is your typical sub. It's, it's a 10 inch sub. It's got XLR, as you can see on the back here, it's got your XLR in and out. It's got RCA in and out for your unbalanced connections. And then it's got a crossover. It's got a 180 phase. It's got a level, which I usually just set them to max. Um, and then, cause I got a monitor controller that'll deal with this. It's got a foot switch too. And then your typical power, which I find very interesting that there's no on off. Adam, why no on off? <laughs> um, anyways, there's no on off switch to these, which I, the sub, which I find very interesting. It's just on all the time, I guess. I haven't read the manual. It might have an auto shut off where if there's no signal going through it, it just kind of goes to sleep. Um, a lot of subs have those. Um, but the front, as you can see, is just a wood cabinet because this particular sub uh, fires downward. And I'm not entirely sure the design of why you'd have it fire downward other than you probably get a little bit more even dispersion from your low end because it's hitting the floor and bouncing and rather than just going out. Now, sub frequencies are known to be omnidirectional and go in multiple directions. Um, but... Uh, as I set the sub down here, it'll go behind our desk. And I just did a dumb thing and set it on my cable here. Anyways, uh, it, they kind of go everywhere. So we're gonna set the sub here behind the desk and hook it up. We haven't decided how, but it's our LFE channel when it comes to surround. Uh, now, do I set it up to be a surround all the time? Or do we set it up to where it's hooked up to just left, right as well? And you can use it as a two, one system type thing. Haven't decided exactly how we're going to do this yet, but our interface will allow us to kind of do whatever patching we decide we want to do, uh, at least for now. For now, it'll probably be done within the software patching of our Antelope audio device. So anyways, that's kind of what we got going on here. We thought we'd show you a little bit of what was going on and thank everyone for liking and subscribing. So if you've liked, subscribed, or, you know, hit the bell. We are super excited that you've done that and super grateful. Those of you who, who haven't, which is a good portion of you who haven't subscribed and are watching this, uh, go do that. Go hit the like and subscribe. And you know what? Go make some music and I'll see you next time. I'm Justin.